Hello, I am Dr. Kimberly Leopold, owner of Holistic Healthcare Centers with the amazing Shobana Hassan. Thank you. She is an acupuncture scalp expert, and she is going to tell us a little bit about scalp acupuncture, what it can be, some of the things it can be used for, um, different types of scalp acupuncture, and then I'm going to be the head for it. <laughs> Thank you, Dr. Kimberly. So I think before going into what scalp acupuncture can do for us, Maybe we can talk about just one neurological condition. What about stroke? Sure. So what is stroke? Stroke is any kind of damage. A stroke is caused because of any kind of damage that is caused to any part of the brain in the scalp because of some kind of interruption in the blood supply, right? So that could be caused due to two main reasons. One could be the ischemic stroke, which is caused because of some kind of clots or it could be interruption because of some kind of clogging in the blood vessels, or it could be hemorrhagic stroke, where the blood vessels just burst and there's bleeding in the brain. So that could cause some kind of damage. And according to CDC, in the US, I think three-fourths of a million people are affected by stroke. Wow. And every 40 seconds, there is someone who is having stroke. Gosh. And every four seconds, there's somebody who is dying of stroke. Wow. So it's a very serious condition. And we definitely have a fair amount of stroke patients, which is, you know, our, our heart goes out to those patients, and we want to help them sure. as much yes. as we can. Yes, and we have seen results. Yes. You and me, we have seen it. Well, we have seen it here. And you, you and I were both residents in um, the pain clinic, but you were also a resident on the surgery floor in Cook County like Hospital. Post post-operation yes. and that's one place where you really have to watch out for strokes especially if somebody has had any kind of cardiac mm -hmm. or surgery so you are definitely an expert in this area okay so stroke what are the symptoms of stroke let's go into some of the symptoms of stroke yeah which could, can be so we can have one side paralysis mm -hmm. one of the limbs having a weakness or a tightness um, difficulty in cognition oh yes and as well as difficulty in speech kind of like we learned in school you know kind oh, of yes. a word salad where uh -huh. people Slurred just speech yes. right? so yeah so what would you do for that so even before that can be just yeah scalp absolutely <laughs> I'm always pumping the gun <laughs> no I think we will uh, do that but I think if we can introduce scalp acupuncture I think that's that, great and we're gonna keep this part in the video because it shows how well her and I <laughs> work together and that any patient that sees one of us can see the other person because we're sure. so symbiotic we work well together <laughs> so scalp acupuncture it's a contemporary modern technique, yeah. which has come to be only for the past 50 years or so. And the best part about it is it combines the traditional Chinese medicine acupuncture techniques with the modern knowledge that we get from the Western medicine. Like from the Western medicine, we get the different areas where the different functions and what it represents in the body. Right. So that is the best part of the scalp acupuncture. And with fewer needles, we can have the same effective treatment. Which is, which is great. Well, and especially when you have a patient who's had a stroke, sometimes they can't get on the table. And we sometimes can't the they can't, the... it's very difficult for them to shift their clothing. Yes. So we can just do the scalp acupuncture and you have an effective Amazing. treatment, right? So the scalp acupuncture we want to talk about, since you were talking about um, the sensory issues, right? We do have many lines. It's very, it's very straightforward, scalp acupuncture, where if there is a particular function in the part of the body that's, that's being affected by a particular part in the brain, we just go and needle that part. And they have done by empirical ways and through a lot of research, they have mapped it out very neatly for us. Right. Which is right. And they do have sensory line, the motor line, the tremor line, many lines. Mm -hmm. And there are many systems also. So one of the systems in that we do have the sensory line, which just goes diagonally like this. If you were to take the anterior, posterior, midline, and the midpoint, and from there, if you were to go diagonally to the hairline, we do have measurements for that, but right yeah, now we keep it Yeah, fantastic. Free. So in the sensory line, so this part is again divided like a homunculus, a person with face, which occupies two-fifths, and the two-fifths of the mid part is the upper limbs, and the top part would be the lower limbs. So, so it's kind of like a, a like you, you as an acupuncturist, we can almost in our minds I mm -hmm. see 
a body with the arms here uh -huh. and the legs there. Legs hanging down actually if you were to see the homunculus and the thumbs like this yep. and the face which has a bigger range up here. So in case of any kind of sensory issues, any kind of pain issues or palsy that they might have, suppose they were having any kind of issues on the right side here, mm -hmm. then we would go to the contralateral side here. So the contralateral side, if there is a face issue, Mm -hmm. then we go to the lower two-fifth and treat that area awesome. for any kind of facial paralysis, uh, not facial paralysis because in the sensory line we'll be going to the pain and try to you know, yeah. or any kind of those issues, sure. pain and senses. And there is a line parallel to the sensory line which is the motor line and that is parallel and it's 1.5 centimeters in front of the sensory line and that is parallel and it goes on both hemispheres just like the sensory line. So in case this person was having a left side upper limb paralysis, mm -hmm. it could be on both the sides. Like a stroke patient, he could have paralysis on the face, on the upper limb or on the whole of one side. Sure. So for that again, since it is on the left side, we go to the contralateral side, which is the left. And since we are talking about the upper limb, we go to the middle two fifth. Okay. That's what we treat for any, for any kind of uh, paralysis. And uh, you also said one. Yes. Well, and would you like to show it oh, on sure. my head? Sure. Awesome. Mm -hmm. so we could use these well, I'll use. for the sake of this. We'll do it on this side. Which condition do you want to let's say well let's do both let's show both lines and uh -huh. show show um paralysis maybe lower limb and maybe um a facial pain okay so like paralysis neurosis. for the right yes. side lower limb if you were having perfect then we would go to the left side so that's where we will go we'll put a few more needles but this is just to show right the, the area the motor area and the sensory area would be just the first one. So if you were to have any sensory issues, is it a face issue or what right. issue do you want to be treated with? Um, let you decide. <laughs> okay. If, um, if you were having a face issue, let's have yeah. it. Let's Maybe trigeminal, it trigeminal neuralgia. neuralgia. So it we see a lot of that at the clinic. Yeah. So the sensory line would be going like this. The face part is the lower, lower two fifth. Sorry, <laughs> gravity. <laughs> Gravity's yes. always at play with these. <laughs> yes, let's take that a little. So the lower two fifth. So I would go with, I would go and palpate mm -hmm. on certain parts. Um, we'll say that's tender. Area. Maybe that would whichever be tender. is tender, like an arch. There you go. How was that for you? That's fantastic. And, it, and it, what's amazing is that we can treat such a difficult condition mm -hmm. in such a simple way. Yes. And, uh, and with fewer needles and yes. lesser amount of time. So how many needles total do you think if you were doing a full treatment for, um, let's just say, one of those conditions, so let's say the um, trigeminal neuralgia, how many needles total would you do for I would this? do around six to eight needles. That is what we did in Schroeder also, like mm -hmm. a post-stroke patient. Yes. When they came in, they would just sit on the chair and just like how we do it, we would do six to eight needles and if they are able to take needles on their hands and other parts of the body, we would do that. But in case we are not doing on the rest of the body, we would ask them to get up and try to walk in the lobby. Yes. So that helps get them allowed to see the immediate relief and they're so happy after that. That's so that was one of the things that excited me so much and I was thrilled to see that. Yes, yeah, and say it makes it so exciting when you see patients with that instant relief. Yes, it gives us relief and yeah. it gives us happiness. Right. Awesome. So, and uh, you also asked about the speech. Yes. Right? So in case of slurred speech, so aphasia uh, is one of the conditions, right? So aphasia is any problem in communicating the rocca area, which is here and the Wernicke area is here. Uh, just like when we touch something, the signal, the motor signal 
the sensory signal actually goes to the brain mm -hmm. and then the muscle signal, the motor signal is sent so that we can take our hands away. Similarly, even in speech, it is a process, right? We need to understand. And that part of the brain is the Wernicke area. Okay. Where it comprehends things. And then through the arcuate vesiculus, it goes to the Broca area, which is used in the motor neurons, mm -hmm. which helps in speaking. Right. So one is with the comprehension, which is the Wernicke area, the speech three area, and the speech one area is the Broca's area. So the person who is affected by stroke, the symptoms could be either with producing the speech, which mm -hmm. is the broken speech. It will be a very effortful speech. They are not able to move the muscles as they want, but the comprehension is really good. So we go and we do it on the broca area, with the which is almost coinciding with the lower two-fifth, the facial area, right? Those yes. are the motor neurons that supplies to the upper area and the lips, the tongue, and the larynx. If there is a problem with the comprehension, and the person can speak just fluently, anything, but it makes no sense. Right, like and word salad. It's yes. word salad. So that means the Wernicke area is affected. The comprehension has mm -hmm. to be taken care of. So then we go to that part of the speech area and we go to needles there. Can you show so, where these parts are? Oh, sure. Awesome. So now we have a patient has a loved one and they want to bring them in. They kind of know. So I'll turn better this time. So the Broca area is kind of here. It is in the lower two-fifth of the head. Of the head? Yes. So there. And one key area will be behind. It's here. So the comprehension, then it goes through the arcuate fasciculus to the motor neurons, and then it comes here. So it will be here. Do you want me to put the needle there? Sure. OK. Wernicke area can be on the posterior side. It almost coincides with the vertical, that level on top okay. of the apex of the ear. So behind also the, that whole area. This is the global aphasia, where both the comprehension is affected, the motor neurons are affected, as well as the the pathway, right? Yep. From the Wernicke to the Broca, that is also. Then we go through something called the global aphasia that is in the back. That makes sense. Yeah. Post-stroke patient can also have uh, movement, balance issues, or coordination issues. Mm -hmm. So for that, we go to the cerebral part because that takes care of smooth, coordinated movements in both sides of the body. And that is in this part, right? We have the cerebral yeah. in the back, and we also have the visual area there, the visual cortex. So do you want me to show you? Yes, and I just want to mention something that Shobhana pointed out is while we're talking about scalp acupuncture being so great for stroke, it helps a tremendous amount of things. So if you think about this, um, this can be, with everything that we're doing, we could be working with a patient who has cerebral palsy, ataxia, oh, yes. most neurological conditions, mm -hmm. migraines on some of the points here. Yes. So it's a broad range. We're just highlighting stroke mm -hmm. today to kind of give up a mock patient to help you know better yes. understand cortical blindness so many yes. things can be yes so i will swing thing. around so, oh sure okay. so you go to the eop which is the external occipital protuberance and from that we take one centimeter and the portion that goes up three centimeter that is a visual area and if we go three centimeters and go down like four centimeters, that is the cerebellum part, which is in charge of our balance and coordination, this part. So that is the part that we are going to focus on now. If a person were to have any kind of balance and coordination issues in their body, then that is exactly where we go. In that region? Yes. And yes, with the cerebral palsy, cerebellar yes. palsy, yes. and cerebellar ataxia, those places could be quite sensitive. And, and we have, um, you know, we've seen in pediatrics, those places a lot of times they need just acupressure. Yes. So the stroke is all ages, you know, <laughs> neurological conditions can be all ages. Yes. So we, if we have a patient, it's just too tender. 
to mm -hmm. touch that area. We have a vast of, amount of other options that we can offer that do not include putting a needle in. We can, yes, we can elicit puncture. a response by color puncture, yeah. acupressure, mm -hmm. tweena. So there's a yes. lot of options. So I think we covered the cerebellar area. We might go to the sure. visual area now. Visual area, it is pointing upwards from the external. And I'm told I have really good eyesight, so we'll see if these are tender. Are those tender? No. Good. But if some, a patient who's having, like you had mentioned, um, cortical blindness. Blindness. Or, that is the exact point that we want to hit. So it's a three centimeter line. And whichever is the most sore, we just go at that point. That one's a little sore, actually. So. Okay, there I we go. Oh, no, 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 it's, it's interesting. Yeah. Okay, so if a person has vertigo or any kind of... Yeah, we see a lot of that here. We just go to the temporal lobe. So scalp acupuncture, it can treat a wide range of conditions. It's not only with stroke patients. We started with that because stroke patients have a wide variety of... Well, um, and there's not as much out there in conventional medicine Yes. to treat after a certain amount of time and that's one area where acupuncture kind of shines is mm -hmm. even if there's been you know a bit of time since the stroke happened we still have seen that we can make progress yes. in decreasing symptoms yes so the word vertigo area is 1.5 centimeters above the ear apex it's a four centimeter line so we want to be needling that way since we have a needle that i'm not going to put the needle but that is exactly where the needle will go when you have a vertigo or hearing issue. Because that part of the cortex, auditory and uh, vertigo, all those places in the temporal lobe here. Is there anything else you want to? No, I think that's so helpful. Well, Shobana, like I said, scalp expert, that is here. And if you have any questions, please put them in the comments below. Um, she will be happy to answer them. and. Mm -hmm. We just hope that if you like this, she'll be doing another one in the next week or so showing how to use scalp acupuncture and auricular acupuncture to aid in um, psycho-emotional disorders, stress management, and um, effects of trauma. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Thank you.